What's going on everybody? Welcome back to this week's video. Today we've got a leg day for you guys as well as an unboxing and a special announcement about sponsorship, but we'll get to that at the end of the video. First things first, we go through my leg day. I'll go ahead and throw that up on the screen now. So this is what I would do at the gym. Obviously we're not at the gym, we've got our heat fixed in our garage. It's a little cold in here still, so we're gonna do a nice little warm up. But otherwise, we'll be going through this full leg day. I'll be explaining my modifications I make while I'm at home rather than in the gym. A little bit of why I structured things certain ways, the different sets, reps, all that good stuff. So first things first, let's get into a little warm up. I like to keep my warm ups pretty short and sweet, about five to 10 minutes, nothing more. I like to get the blood flowing, that kind of thing. So we'll start with some jump ropes, then we'll move into a little bit of leg specific warm ups. So on upper body day, I'll definitely do some band work, band pull aparts, uh, arm circles, all that good stuff. On a leg day, I'll jump rope for about five minutes and I'll get some high knees, some butt kickers, that kind of thing, just get the blood flowing and get right into our first exercise. Now that we're warmed up, we'll get into our first exercise, the leg extension. Typically, a lot of people put compounds first on their leg days, push days, whatever it is, bench, deadlift, squat. I've decided to focus more on hypertrophy and muscle growth rather than strength. If I was aiming for strength, I would 100% put a leg press, a squat, something like that, more compound movement. But I'm really trying to focus on that mind-muscle connection, priming my quads for the rest of the exercises, and really focusing on that squeeze. So in order to do a leg extension at home, at the gym, leg extension machine, perfect, just go do that. At home, we do need this one little gadget I'll be using twice today. It is a monkey foot, or I think they're called monkey feet by Animal House Fitness. They are super convenient, I think it's like 50 bucks, they might even have a deal during the holidays. But basically, it allows you to add a dumbbell or attach a dumbbell to your foot. So we'll be using this to attach a dumbbell to our foot and act like a leg extension. Nothing crazy here. We have our dumbbell, we're gonna open up the monkey foot, attach the dumbbell. So as you can see right now, the dumbbell's attached. All we have to do is slide our heel in there, boom. And then basically you kind of have like bindings, like a snowboard, if you've ever been snowboarding. So we're just gonna head, crank those bindings in there, make sure our foot's nice and secure. I also like to add this foam roller because as you can see, if I didn't have the foam roller, my foot sits on the ground. And with the foam roller, it elevates a little bit. And then we're just like a regular leg extension, have a nice upright posture, squeeze at the top. And the one thing about this leg extension, the strength curve, is a little bit different than a leg extension machine. At the bottom, there isn't really any resistance where there might be on a leg extension machine. But this guy, the resistance increases, 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 and maxes out at the top, whereas a leg extension machine pretty much has a consistent resistance path all the way up. But we'll be here, four sets, 18, 15, 12, nine. Our next exercise is the barbell Romanian deadlift, an absolute staple in my leg days for that posterior chain, the hamstrings and glutes specifically. A few things to note about this exercise is you wanna make sure you have a nice flat back and you're bracing your core. This is not just a leg exercise, it truly is a total body exercise. You make sure you're getting those lats set back and down, make sure you have a nice flat back and you're reaching down and back with your butt to make sure that when you fully extend that you feel a stretch in your hamstrings before coming back up. As you can see, a nice flat back, there's a line connecting the back of my head, middle of my back, and my butt. Make sure we keep that throughout the whole movement. As our hips go back, we feel a stretch in that hamstrings. Once we feel that maximum stretch and we can't go back anymore with our hips, we'll come up. Any more than that, it's more of a lower back exercise for the last little portion to get lower. Don't worry about all, going all the way to the ground. Don't worry about your depth relative to others. Just go until you feel that hamstring and that's when it'll come up. It's a big hip hinge movement, focusing on that posterior chain, like I mentioned, the hamstrings and glutes. Three sets, increase the weight each time and you'll be golden. The next exercise we have is the leg press or would have. Funny enough, the leg press at my gym is also broken, so I've been having to do squats in the place of leg press. Some sort of squatty movement. I like the leg press because it takes my lower back out of the movement and really allows me to focus on my quads because on the leg press, in order to focus on the quads, we're gonna bring the feet down and in. And on, I'll do the same thing on my squat here. Typically, I do low bar, a nice wide stance squat. Here, you'll see me do a high bar as well as a close stance squat to make sure I'm focused on the quads. We wanna have that nice drive, knees over toes, slow and controlled, make sure we're engaging our quads and basically spreading our legs out. So we make sure that our knees are going over our toes, nice and slow, down, feel that stretch in the quads and really squeeze the quads and push our knees out on our way up. Nice and slow and controlled, 
emphasize on the quads rather than the posterior chain, although it is definitely being worked a little bit, trying to mimic the best we can of a quad dominant leg press. The next exercise, we're going back to the hamstrings. As you can see, we're kind of bouncing back and forth between the quads and hamstrings. A great way to make sure our hamstrings or quads get a little recovery time before we hit them again in a different position. This time we'll be hitting our hamstrings. If I was at the gym, I'd do a lying hamstring curl. Unfortunately, we don't have that machine in here in the garage, but we'll be breaking out the monkey foot again and doing some standing leg curls. As you can see, we're at, once again, attach the dumbbell to the bottom of our foot using that monkey foot. I also have this plate here to make sure I get a little bit of elevation, make sure my foot is not resting on the ground, and a very basic controlled leg curl. As you can see, I try to keep that front knee as quiet as possible and just curling using our hamstrings. Make sure we get a nice full extension at the top, a big squeeze as we come up, hold that for a second, and then back down. Slow and controlled here. We're doing three sets of 15. Should be able to use the same weight the whole time. Once we're done with the right, we'll go ahead and switch over to the left. After that exercise, we are down to some accessories left. We have the walking lunge. In the garage, we're actually gonna do step back lunges instead. At the gym, I would do consecutive walking lunges. But since we're in the garage, don't have as much space, we're gonna do simple step back lunges. Weight these however much you can. I like to do anywhere between 30 to 50 pounds, depending on the day, honestly. We've just got two sets here, 20 steps per leg. So it's a lot of volume, but only two sets. Make sure you make them count. Make sure you're nice, controlled, upright chest. As you step back, come all the way up, back. I like to alternate my legs. You could do all one leg, all with the right, and then all with the left if you wanted to. I personally like to split it up, but it's really just preference. Our next exercise is gonna be the hip adduction, or the good girl machine, where you bring your legs together. Unfortunately, that is pretty specific to the gym. It's really hard to replicate without that exact piece of equipment. But what I found to help me out when I'm not at the gym is to do some isometric holds with the medicine ball. So essentially what that is, instead of doing a set of 10 to 15, I'm gonna hold the medicine ball between my legs, squeezing as hard as I can to bring my legs together for about 30 seconds. It's nothing too crazy. It definitely isn't the same as doing the actual machine, but it gives me the same sensation of squeezing my adductors together as hard as I can for about 30 seconds. It is very hard and exhausting, as you'll see if you wanna try it out for yourself but it's a great way to still use the adductors without actually having the machine. Our last two exercises of the day are the calf raise and tibialis raise. The calf raise, super basic if you haven't done it before. A lot of gyms have machines where you can do it. You can do it on the Smith machine, um, dumbbells, barbells, whatever it is, if you wanna weight those, you can even just do them standing. Get a nice squeeze to the top. Anything where you can slowly lower the weight, get a nice stretch in those calves, and squeeze all the way up to the top. Calf raise is the biggest thing. We're gonna keep those nice, slow, and controlled. The tibialis raise, I've actually just started to incorporate in my program. It is the muscle on the front of the leg. A great way to hit this is the tibialis raise, which I'll demonstrate real quick. But essentially what we're doing is we're going up against the wall, leaning back a little bit, having our foot maybe a foot, foot and a half ahead of us, and simply raising our toes. We're gonna bring those toes up as high as we possibly can, squeeze at the top, let down, relax the toes, and then bring them back up. It is a great exercise. I've recently just been doing body weight and pretty much as many reps as I can. First set, I might get 20 to 30. Second set, 20 to 25. And third set, my goal is 30. You wanna squeeze these as hard as you can at the top. Remember to relax your foot at the very bottom and then squeeze as hard as you can all the way back up. So that wraps up our leg day. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'll throw up the workout again right there. Boom. Go ahead, screenshot it. Let me know if you give it a try, what you think about it. But make sure, once again, you're going all out, every set, every rep, make it count. So real quick, like I said at the beginning of the video, I have an announcement to make. I am now partnered with Transparent Labs, which is super exciting. I've had their products for a while now. If you can't tell on a lot of my videos, I tend to change up the protein, the pre-workout I use. Pre-workout mostly I post on Instagram, but really trying to figure out what works best for me and what I like. And it happens to be Transparent Labs. I reached out to them. We were able to get a link for you guys, just like everyone else, affiliate link, 10% off. It supports me, gets you guys a little discount code, but they decided to send me a little care package. It's kind of like a welcome to the team thing. So we've got some products here that I'll, I'll quickly go over. Um, don't want to take too long, but we've got some apparel. So we've got a Transparent Lab sweatshirt, two of them, we got a hoodie and a crew neck and then basically all of our supplements. So real quick, I'll unbox this. As you can see, we have a lot of supplements here. They're by no means necessary to see success and progress in the gym, but they will definitely help you see that progress and recover properly. Three supplements I highly recommend. One being some sort of protein source. 
This is my favorite, the milk chocolate. It is by far the best tasting protein out there. I mix that in with my recipes as well as occasionally just having it as a shake. It really helps me hit my protein goal. Another thing is the pre-workout. This is their bulk pre-workout. I also have their stim free if I have to work out later. Don't need the caffeine kick, that'll keep me up all night. Primarily, I do use the bulk. And then the last thing I use is this gut health. It's a probiotic. When I'm bulking, I definitely use this. It just helps me keep my gut in check. As we increase the calories, we're demanding our stomach and gut health do a lot more work to manage all those calories. So I highly recommend those three. Outside of that, everything else is just, like I said, a supplement. It's something to assist you after you have the main parts of working and diet in check, like the sleep aid. If you struggle to get some sleep like I have recently, it definitely helps me just recover properly. So if you guys do wanna support me at all, it is code Perez. I'll throw the link down in the description below. If you guys wanna support me, use code Perez or just need to restock on some supplements. Also, one of the greatest things why I chose Transparent Labs is because how transparent they are. You can go to their website, it explains exactly why they put certain ingredients in each thing, each supplement they have, as well as what it does. They're extremely transparent, hence the name, about what they put in their supplements, and I could not think of a better company to partner with. So super excited about that announcement. Also, I've got a cool little poster I've had for a minute, but haven't showed you guys. So it is based off one of my most recent animes I've been watching, one of my favorites. If you can guess it, Go ahead, leave a comment down below. But here we have, oh, that is actually sick. So, you guys, oh, you can't really see. So here we have Asta from Black Clover in a pretty sick position. So this is gonna go up on the garage wall. That'll be in addition to the posters we already have of Arnold, Muhammad Ali. But pretty excited for that, that just came in. But super stoked about Transparent Labs, Co Perez, link in the description. Super excited to be working with them, love their products, highly recommend. Like I said, the milk chocolate is my favorite protein. If you do use my code, make sure to let me know whether it's a DM on Instagram or it's a comment here on YouTube. I really wanna thank you guys for the support I've had recently. This is a dream come true, honestly, to have a sponsorship. It's all thanks to you guys. Otherwise, on the video here, make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.